being such a tropical plant, it may be another one that really needs to be kept very, very warm and in very, very bright, diffuse light when you're doing it. Yeah, so have you tried it that way as well? Um, I don't know. I've done it off and on. I think it needs cutting back. It, it needs it now, but I was thinking also to wait until later on, like June or something. Right, when the days are longer and things like that, that may be, uh, make a difference. Um, the interesting thing of plant is we actually had one inside the store under pretty low light conditions and it lasted there for quite a long time. It didn't really bloom, it did start to get a bit stretched, which, which again plants will do if they're not in enough light, but I was very impressed it didn't really lose leaves, it didn't discolor, and we had it there for probably a couple months. So I was, again, a little bit of experimentation, you never know. <laughs> um, let's see here, this can be an issue. But again, it's just a matter, you know, like plants outside, the better care you take of them, the less likely it is to be a problem. If you do come up with spider mite issues or mealybug, is everyone familiar with mealybug? Mealybug? It is the mo one of the most, that and scale, they're both scales actually, are very difficult to get rid of. Um, there's a product called neem oil. Um, the ready to spray we get is called Rose Defense, and I know they're probably familiar with this. Um, this does have to coat the insects though, so you do have to be real meticulous, just take your time, have a cup of tea or a glass of wine before you get started on a big plant, <laughs> and um, uh, just uh, spray, never spray when the plant is in strong light of course, but uh, this is pretty much the best thing for, as far as I'm concerned, for scale or mealybug infestations. If an infestation like that gets away from you, if you don't notice that, you know, it's been there and all of a sudden you realize it's everywhere on the plant, quite honestly, I usually suggest getting rid of the plant because it is just too difficult to get it under control. Because the little, the young stage will be down low on the plant, you may not see it, you'll get rid of it, the scale will flake off over time, you'll, you'll think everything's okay and then all of a sudden it's back. So if a plant does get a major infestation, I, I do think that sometimes you do just have to let it go. Yes? Uh, one of the gentlemen here told me one time to use a half and half alcohol and water, uh -huh. which I sprayed on and then uh -huh. in some cases hand wiped. Right. And that kept them off for a long time. Did it? Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. And alcohol, yeah. that is what everybody used to use mm -hmm. was alcohol and water. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it still yeah. works. Yeah. You know, so if you want to go that route, that's great. If you just want to grab something, the neem mm -hmm. oil. I wouldn't even try the safer soap. Safer is if you get, get a few aphids on something, which aren't as common inside. Uh, spider mite, you know, you could try the safers on that. Okay. And let's see, again, just the regular fertilizing, um, you know, with these products. Also, if you do the moss on a pot like this, I don't suggest putting lots of it. I, I just like to pull it and just really give just enough to, to, um, to disguise the surface of the soil and the edges of the pot. If you get a whole lot, I just don't think there's enough air exchange with the soil. It can stay a little wet too long. Um, so just, just enough to kind of despise that, uh, the soil. And? Yes. Can you talk about African violets? Yes, uh-huh. African violets are actually, with the proper amount of light, very easy to grow inside. And this is another one. There is so much variation from little minis that have leaves that are the size of this petal <laughs> and still will produce a fair sized flower or uh, spikes of flowers and into these and um, every color of bloom, uh, variegated foliage. Um, they don't have to be kept under particular lights. They don't have to be kept in orchid pots. Um, the big thing with these, a couple things, someone was asking about um, the kind of container. Actually, they don't want to be in terracotta. If the leaves are resting on something like a real porous uh, terracotta pot, they will rot off where they're touching that. They used to make these little collars that you would put under uh, the leaves to keep it off of the edge of a terracotta pot. I don't know if they still do. Um, they can bloom on and off all year long. At least an east or a southeast window would be the amount of light I'd want to put it in to get it to continue blooming. And when you water, try to keep the water off of the foliage. 
uh, just water. And that's true with a lot of plants as just general maintenance. Try to keep the water off the foliage if you can. Um, again, just, you know, for water spotting and things like that. But just water the surface of the soil. You want, I always go by weight when I'm watering house plants. You know, if the plant feels a little lighter, it's time to water it. Um, once you do water it, you want it to definitely feel heavier. And if you do that, you'll know that the whole root ball is thoroughly moistened. And when it's thoroughly and really moistened like that, it's going to dry down more evenly. So you're not going to get pockets of dry in there. If you, like say, if it's dry and you pour water in there, most of it's going to rush out. The inside of the soil ball is not going to be moistened. So you want the plant to feel heavier than it did when you started. Um, I would generally say, depending on the size of the container, if it's thoroughly watered in the beginning, you can let it dry down anywhere from a quarter inch to two inches, depending on the size of the pot. Something like a Chinese evergreen of this size, properly watered in the beginning, I would say you could let it dry down probably about an inch and a half before you need to water it again, and then just water it very thoroughly. Um, again, I'm sorry I got off of that. I was thinking of that as I was feeling this plant. Um, but yeah, African violets really should not be that difficult to grow inside. They don't have to have special lights or the special pots. You mentioned several times that some of these plants you can put outside. Mm -hmm. Can you put all of these plants outside all year long? No. At uh -huh. You cannot. Some plants are really cold sensitive where they may suffer damage even in the low 50s or upper 40s. Chinese evergreens do not want to be cold. Yeah, they really can't be. Peace lilies, um, these guys I would say probably 52, 50 degrees at the lowest and then they really are going to, they'll kind of wilt, they won't, if a plant gets too cold it just won't recover properly either if it's for an extended period of time. Chinese evergreens don't want to be too cold. Usually a uh, healthy peace lily, um, I would say upper 40s. I do have one that I've left outside. It's been in a four inch pot for a couple of years and it's kind of tucked back behind some things. And I think I brought it in one time this winter, but I just, I have a balcony so it's rather protected. And, um, and it looks okay. It needs a new pot desperately. <laughs> but um, let's see, Aurelians are another one that you really have to be careful, like um, Chinese evergreens, I would say 50-ish, you know, not any lower than that for sure. Um, Dracaenas are another one, like these guys, and the corn plants and things like that are also real cold sensitive. Um, something kind of interesting about plants, plant leaves do burn just like skin burns, and how you can tell is if you go to a plant and you think it's getting too much light for whatever reason, you've noticed something doesn't seem right with it, if you feel the leaf, it will be very, very hot to the touch. And I mean, unusually hot. And you will know that that plant is undoubtedly going to suffer some burn on it. Um, speaking of burning, if you have a plant sitting in sun that you want to clean up, it needs to be moved out of the sun before you do anything really on the foliage, but even something as, as mild as green glow, do not put it on the plant when the plant is in the sun. Okay. All right, um, let's see, even, you know, a lot of these plants like these begonias and calanchos, which I'm sure y'all are familiar with, they will, um, also, uh, can sometimes be, uh, re uh, you can get them to rebloom, but uh, it does take a pretty good while. Kalanchos will rebloom, they're short day bloomers, so generally January into February. No matter what you do the rest of the year, they're not going to bloom for you in the summer most of the time. Although they're hybridizing those as well, <laughs> so you may have some out there that can be um, gotten to rebloom in the summertime. 